Welcome to this lecture series in linear algebra. In this lecture, we learned the primary decomposition theorem, which is a fundamental and very important theorem in linear algebra. So let us uh, recall the main ingredients that we will need to follow. So first of all, we will recall the fact that we have proven way earlier. So suppose we have two endomorphisms on a vector space P, then this happens. So the dimension of the kernel of the composite is at most the sum of the dimensions of the individual endomorphisms. Okay. Next, a matter of definitions mostly is that two distinct irreducible polynomials over a field are relatively prime. And lastly, we will need Euclid's theorem for polynomials, which says that if Ax and Bx are two relatively prime polynomials over some field F, then there exist polynomials Px and Ux such that this happens. All right. Here are, <coughs> here are some problems for practice. And now let us get started. So this is the main lemma. Once we understand this lemma, everything else just follows. So fix an endomorphism on a vector space V and let Ax and Bx be two relatively prime polynomials over F. Then this happens. This is the statement. So it says that the kernel of the product of AT and BT is actually the sum of the kernels of AT and BT. And in fact, this sum is the direct sum. Interesting statement. So let's get started. First, we will prove this part. And then we will discuss what about that. So to prove this part, what we really need to show is that the intersection of kernel AT and kernel BT is trivial. So fix something in the intersection. And our goal is to show that this is zero. Right? So, since AX and BX are relatively prime, by Euclid's theorem, there exist polynomials Px and Qx over F such that this happens which implies right if we have a polynomial equation, we get corresponding equation about endomorphisms just by substituting the endomorphism of our choice in place of x. All right. But since this endomorphism is equal to that endomorphism, we may apply both of them to a vector of our choice and that vector is v. Okay. But what is the left side? The left side is and the right side is v. But this is 0 and that is 0 because v is in the kernel of AT and the kernel of BT. We get 0 is equal to v. And this proves the first thing that we wanted to establish, that is this equality. Okay. So now we need to establish this part. I mean, we need to establish that this is equal to that. So to do this, um, yeah, so first note that so we are just saying that kernel AT and kernel BT are both contained in kernel of AT BT. This is a trivial fact, so I leave that to you to justify. Therefore, therefore we have this, right? Kernel AT and kernel BT are both contained here. And hence their sum is also contained here. So, if we take dimensions on both sides, we get... Uh, 
right? If a subspace is contained in another subspace, the dimension of the contained one is at most the dimension of the container, clearly. But since this is a direct sum, we can write this as we have already proven. So the left side is just the sum of dimensions. Right? But what about the right side? As we recalled in the beginning, the dimension of the composite of, I mean, dimension of the kernel of the composite of two endomorphisms is at most the sum of the dimension of the kernel of the individual endomorphisms. Right? And we see that this is equal to that. So the sandwich that we have this is less than that is less than that this is a sandwich because this and that are equal it means that this must be an equality and if you just think about it this must be an equality and this containment hence cannot be a proper containment so this containment is actually an equality and that establishes this fact and we are done so it's a short piece of reasoning but it is crucial all right, so let's move on and finish this lecture com uh, quickly. So here is our first corollary. It is just an inductive application of the previous one. Fix an endomorphism on a vector space V, and now instead of two relatively prime polynomials, we have R pairwise relatively prime polynomials. Then we want to say that the kernel of the composite, or rather, I mean, I have written, what have I written here? I should have written a T. Kernel of the composite of these things. It doesn't matter in which order you take the composition. They all commute with each other. This kernel is same as the sum, is same as the direct sum. And it is just an inductive application of the previous one. In the previous example, or rather in the previous lemma, R were two. Here R is arbitrary. R is certainly greater than equal to two otherwise. Otherwise this is trivial. Yeah, so proof is induction on R. Okay. <clears throat> and a consequence is primary decomposition theorem. So fix an endomorphism on a vector space V and assume the endomorphism is non-zero. Let mx be the minimal polynomial of the endomorphism. And suppose we have factorized the polynomial into monic irreducibles. So each ai is a monic irreducible. <coughs> each ai is a monic irreducible. Sorry about that. <coughs> each ai is a monic irreducible. So mx is factorized in this fashion in this fashion. So then we want to say that V is the direct sum of the kernels of these guys. And the proof is very simple. Just apply the previous proposition. We know that kernel of MT is kernel of this product. Which, let me write it this way. Hopefully, we'll make things clearer. So what have we done? We are just saying that. We are just defining mix as aix to the power ki. So when we define things this way, since ais are pairwise relatively prime, and because, because they are distinct monic irreducibles, so ais are pairwise relatively prime, and hence their exponents are also pairwise relatively prime. So mix, or I should say m1 up to mr, these are pairwise relatively prime polynomials, and hence by the previous lemma, this is the direct sum of these kernels, which is nothing but that. 
And what is kernel of mt? What is, what is this thing? Since mx is the minimal polynomial, mt kills everything, and hence this is just the vector space v. So that's it. So v is the direct sum of these kernels, and that is the primary decomposition theorem. All right, so with that, I want to end this lecture. As usual, like, comment, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time.